Hello, hello. Welcome to the vlog. Um, for all of those of you wanting uh, more strap vlogs, they are upcoming uh, if this goes out after that. Uh, but this is more pressing. Dan and I've got a couple of things coming up. We're doing a Birmingham guitar show this coming weekend in February. This won't go out before that. Um, up in Birmingham. Uh, I'm also going to go and hang out with Ainsley Lister a little bit, an old friend who um, said, why don't you come and maybe sit in on a tune or... And then on the Sunday, we're doing a live kind of everything we've learned in 30 minutes. <laughs> See if we can deliver that. Uh, if it goes well, we'll record it as a show. Of late, I've gone from my big Schmidt Array SA525 with um, Gig Rig G2 on it to this little tiny SA250. which is really great because it's so easy to travel with. I had to go to Germany a couple of times and some other things where the big board is quite hard to take unless you book extra luggage and all of that. Um, so this has been brilliant. However, it is really small and there's a couple of things that aren't on it that I really want on it. Hallelujah, Martin at Schmidt Array has just brought out a 350. 250 being 25 centimeters, uh, 350 being 35. And I'm kind of hoping that I can get all the stuff on this little board, plus a couple of other things that I want to add, plus there's a couple of problems that have, um, that have come to pass. Uh, no G2 in here, sadly, because it won't fit. Um, so I'm asking for trouble there. But anyway, I'm going to try and base it around a QMX4 so I can have the problematic pedals on loop switches so they stay quiet and out of the way. The two problems that I mentioned are this. Regular viewers will know that I've totally fallen in love with this again. And even my esoteric, expensive boutique fuzzes don't do what this does in terms of the cleanup off the volume pot. So I'm not going to put that on the board. I'm going to carry it separately. It needs a battery anyway, so it doesn't matter if it just sits off the board first in line. So that's that. The other problem is more thorny off a very nice guy off reverb.com from Poland called Peter. Hi Peter, if you ever watched this. Thank you for um, selling me this and uh, making it arrive in such fantastically, brilliantly working condition. Um, it's a beautiful thing. It's a full tone tube tape echo, which I've coveted for a long time. And it's one of those things, you know, once you hear it, you can't unhear it. And that is a problem. You'll get to hear it for the end of this video. It is spectacular sounding. Uh, and it's also going to form the basis of some tape echo videos that Dan and I maybe already have done by the time this comes out or that we're about to do. So again, that's not going to go on the pedal board. That's ridiculous. That'll sit off. And I've got even more uh, ambitious plans for how that's going to work in a not at all wet dry rig. It's more like a dual mono rig. So on the board currently is a Klon, a Bunar, Free the Tone Flight Time, and a Supro Tremolo. Now, of course, that means I don't have a main overdrive. So that means that problem needs solving, and I'm solving that with this. Gladio from Cornerstone. Absolutely out of the blue, surprise, favorite overdrive in a long, 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 long time. Two stages. Um, so that's gonna be the main overdrive. Ainsley wants to play Purple Rain at the, uh, at the guitar show, which is one of the tracks he plays. It's a big sort of important part of his show. And um, I was like, what key did you do it in? He's like, B. Purple Rain isn't in B. It's in B flat, you know, for that important open chord. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we tuned to E flat, so it's okay. You can play it in B flat. I'll play it in B. Everything's cool. So that's going to be really good fun. Requires this. However, we just did this on Pick and Mix. New Neighbor, Inspire, Tri Chorus Plus. It's kicking this off, which is a big deal for two reasons. One, Analog dry through with adjustable mix control. Secondly, it's got a tone control for the actual sound. Plus the extra sounds in it. You've got vibrato sounds, all kinds of really cool things in there and a delay if you want it. So that's gonna kick the DC2 WAS off. So in addition to this stuff on the board, two extra pedals, the Gladio and the Inspire Tri-Chorus Plus. So let's see if it will fit on then, shall we? Excuse the rubbish audio and the table banging and the camera shaking. Um, I'll try and edit out as much of it as possible. Uh, let's turn these boards around. 
so you can see. So all this stuff's got to go on there, plus this and this, and the Quartermaster. It's going to be a squeeze. It's going to be a real squeeze. Martin uh, at Schmidt Array makes this really cool riser for the QMX, and he is going to run two QMX4s because G2 is too complex for him. It takes up too much room for me, so... Very best to you, Mick. Nice. Yeah, right then. It's insane. It's plenty of clone clones that sound as good as this. Well, it sound 98% as good as this. But I still love it, and I really do love it, and it's absolutely crazy to own it and not use it, so um, it stays. I love you, Clon. Look at that. What a mess. So it is a challenge, you know, when you, um, Dan's power supply system is the very best available, the quietest, the most reliable, the most flexible, but it does involve quite a lot of boxes. So when you're looking at a tiny board, that's an issue. Okay, you're out of there. Uh, this isn't looking too bad at all, actually. Um, could probably do with getting Boom. Pretty happy with that. Um, as you can see, I can get to everything I need to get to. So I need to get to the tap on the Free the Tone. Hopefully I can avoid the Quartermaster. That switch is raised significantly there. So I think I can do that. I need to get to the Boonar. I need to get to these two, obviously, to turn the different sides off. The Clon always stays on, so I don't actually need to get to that. Oh yes, I do. I do need to get to that because I've got four loops, right? So I think what I'll do is I'll leave all the gain stages out of the loop. So the signal will come into the Gladio, into the Clon, into the Quartermaster. The two delays, the new neighbor and the Supro will have each will have their own loops. I think that'll work pretty good actually. And I've got space at the back there for all my power gubbins. What am I missing? I've obviously missed something. There's not a tuner on there for sure. Let's get wiring. Addendum, where is my brain? Where is my brain? Octave. Oh, that was close. Uh, okay, gonna have to think about this, aren't we? Can't live without that. morning. Right, a uh, quick update. You've just seen the time lapse of how far I've got so far. Uh, I got out of here about half past nine last night, I guess. I just had enough. My brain was starting to shut down after a day's editing and all of that, so I just gave up. Uh, I thought I'd come in this morning. It's now 8am uh, to finish off this power. So the update is the Argo is on. I've managed to fit that on. There's a lot of power gubbins to fit in underneath just to run through that. Uh, the generator brings in the power from the wall and converts that to give out a total of 5,000 milliamps, 5 amps, which then gets split via the distributor. It goes to the distributor first, then it goes out to isolators. And what that does, the isolator has uh, four outputs for maximum about 120 milliamps, I think. Might be a little bit more than that, but anyway. So I can have the Clon, the Gladio, the Supro Trem, and the... Uh, Argo octave fuzz all on low current isolator outputs because none of those require hardly any current at all. The Supra is all analog so it takes virtually no current. Um, same with the Gladio, same with the octave fuzz, same with the Clon and the Humdinger which is doing my wet dry split which means I need two isolators. So, so far we've got one generator, one distributor, two isolators. In addition, I've got three high current pedals, the Bunar, Digital requires more than 120 milliamps. I think it's about 300. I don't know what the actual current draw is, but anyway. Um, so that requires one of Dan's Time Lords, which takes um, the distributor output, 
and then basically isolates it, makes it lovely and clean and puts out high current for the Bunar New Neighbour Inspire. Again, I don't know what the current draw on that is, but I'm just, I should check, I guess, but I'm making an assumption that's because it's digital, it's gonna require a bit more. So there's two Time Lords required for those two things. And then there is another high current adapter required for the free the tone flight time because the free the tone flight time takes 12 volts, 12 volts DC. So that needs um, Dan's supernova adapter thingy. Um, so it's quite a lot of gubbins actually. Um, I mean, it's a pretty powerful little board, but that's quite a lot of items. So, so one generator, one distributor, two isolators, two Time Lords, one supernova. Add that all up, that's pretty expensive. Um, but as I said before, Dan's gig rig power supply, in my opinion, is without doubt the most flexible, quietest um, power supply available. It can grow with you over time, so it can get bigger and smaller as you need to. So yeah, it's a bit of an investment, but I wouldn't use anything else at this point. Not least for the fact, yes, it's a lot of little boxes, but it's not one hulking great big box that you've got to get in there somewhere. Uh, it's just past eight o'clock. I've got about an hour and a half-ish before Fraser and Catherine turn up for work. So let's see how far I can get, because the office is carnage. What a colossal ball ache that was. Um, the time lapse probably tells the story, certainly of the Argo going on, certainly of the <laughs> comedy I had with the, the clasp on the inside of the lid fouling the top of the free the tone flight time. Also, when the lid goes down, I reckon there's a half a mil between the bottom of the lid and the top of the clom knob. So that's just, mm -mm. I think you must have measured that, Martin. Uh, the time lapse may also tell the story of the Bunar which unfortunately is gone for two reasons. One is it flips the phase and I don't have time to fix that. So I swapped it out for the Catlin Bread Echo Rec. Um, the other thing was it was making a clicking noise off the power supply and I did a bit of fault finding and it was making a clicking noise off the power supply. So don't know what that is. The Echo Rec is not doing that. So I had a quick just line check. <laughs> So much to my complete surprise, it does all work. Um, I'm gonna go in there now and plug it all in. Welcome to Insanity. Um, ostensibly dry amp, but it is getting the full tone. Ostensibly wet amp. So signal chain is out of the guitar, into the fuzz face, into the Gladio, into the Argo, the uh, octave, into the clon, then a split happens. The dry side goes to the tube tape echo into the Marshall. The other side of that split goes through all the other pedals on the board, the chorus, the Bunar, the free the tone delay, and the um, Supro tremolo. Sorry, I just said Bunar, I meant echo rec because I've swapped it out. That all hits the two rock, which means both amps are getting all the gain stages. The Marshall is only getting the tube tape echo and the two rock is only getting the rest of the wet effects. So I've just line checked it, but I haven't really played it. So I know everything works, but you're, you join me for the first time hearing it properly through these amps. So um, one thing I know is gonna happen. So here's, here's the sound of just the two amps. Before we turn the echo repeats up, 
I'm going to see if it flips the phase, and I know it does. So uh, when I turn the echo on and off, bearing in mind the echo repeats are down, but this would put the echo circuit into play. <laughs> So having the echo circuit in play at all on the full tone means that uh, it's out of phase. So it's got to be on, right? But I'm not too worried about that because it means I can just have the preamp on all the time and I'll just turn the echo repeats up. Then this happens. Let's try this. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to flick through a few things and just see what see what happens.
I think I bent my guitar out of tune. <laughs> perfect E, perfect E minor. Playing an E major. Um, well, that doesn't sound crap, does it? Uh, cool. End of vlog. Hope it goes well at the guitar show. Actually, maybe I'll cut some of the guitar show in. Uh, so this is interesting, right? ATB Guitars, the lovely people at ATB Guitars, Mike and Dafford, said, yeah, play any guitar you want. I'm like, really? <laughs> Okay, uh, 66 transition logo, so it has the gold logo on the big headstock there, really. Such a cool guitar. So to demonstrate the point, the tape delay was on all the way through that. It wasn't tapped at any uh, tempo. It was just on. It was underneath it. it was... Right. Hope you enjoyed all of that. Um, we certainly enjoyed Phil X, who was on after us on Sunday at the Guitar Show. That guy is utterly amazing. His precision as a player is just off the charts. He's uh, He is rock. And we went to see him um, on maybe Tuesday night in Bristol. It was really cool. Anyway, it is now Friday. Uh, Wednesday night, maybe it was. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It is now Friday after the guitar show. Dan and I have been filming today. We had a good, really good day filming some new shows. And I thought I'd just cap the whole thing off. So the board was cool. Um, sounded great, I thought. I thought there were some really great sounds in there. However, when we got to the guitar show, it, I just developed an intermittent problem. We swapped the Quartermaster out, it wasn't that, and I lost the um, Echorec. And even when I put the Echorec in line with another pedal, it didn't work. And he swapped the other pedal out. Something is just really weirdly wrong. We haven't diagnosed it yet, but anyway, so I just avoided the Echorec, everything else worked fine. I guess one advantage to having a loop switcher is if there's a problem in one loop, then it's out. It's not, it doesn't kill everything else. So anyway, sounds great. So I've got to kind of start again. And I think what I've learned from this build is trying to pack that much in, onto a tiny board is basically asking for trouble. Because the minute you get a problem, uh, there's just no room to fix anything. So um, yeah, so I think I probably wouldn't pack as much on next time. But it did sound good and I was really pleased with it. The full tone tube tape echo was just amazing. I. It, We've done, we filmed another show with that and we're going to do some more on tape echoes, but um, blimey, that's a, an addictive sound. What a crazy addictive sound tape echo is. So yeah, um, I just want to say thank you to everyone that came up and said hello at the guitar show. It was a real pleasure to meet like so many people. Everyone's just so super friendly, saying how much they enjoy TPS and uh, and all the rest of it. Just met some really, really great people. People who comment regularly in the uh, in the comment section of the videos. 
old friends I haven't seen for 25 years, or at least I've known for 25 years and probably haven't seen for 10. Um, just a really nice atmosphere, the UK Guitar Show, so look out for that next year. Also, just to end on a slightly serious note, um, I was also very moved by how many people came up to me and wanted to talk about mental health, or at least let me know that some of the things that we discussed in these vlogs have been of use to them. And some people shared some really personal stories with me about either their own experience with their mental health or someone in their family. Um, so thank you for that. And if talking about it in this way helps just one person, then it is totally worth it. And I'm really pleased that uh, we are all talking about it a bit more. As it goes, um, I had a bit of a kind of an off week this week. But um, the work I've done over the last year or so enabled me to stay the right side and uh, just focus on being present and kind of conscious and all of those things. Um, and I'm overjoyed to say that those techniques and those strategies really, really work. So a bit of a serious note to finish on, but I wanted to mention it, A, because so many people, and I was staggered by the number of people, and not only people who watch the show, but, you know, artists and old friends who said, yeah, I know what you're talking about. So that was the that was the main reason for mentioning it. And B, because, you know, on TPS, it can often seem like Dan and I are just having like the best time ever, all the time. And we do have a great time uh, most of the time. But I just wanted to mention that on the on the gentle trajectory in the right direction, you know, there's bumps along the way. And that's okay, and we should expect those. So anyway, yeah, end on a bit of a serious note. I'll be back. Um, I've got some really exciting news. Uh, something's happening in June, which we're about to announce, which I am unbelievably overjoyed to be doing. Uh, so there'll be another board build for that. And in the meantime, more strap vlogs. So thank you for watching. Um, hope you enjoy it as always. Please visit That Pedal Show store. Please check us out at thatpedalshow.com. Thank you to patrons, all the usual stuff. Uh, we couldn't do it without you. So um, yeah, until the next time, I bid you adieu.